people in here. They've been inside from the start. They haven't had to survive. And they just don't get it. They can't. The very thing that makes you different is what makes you special. Mm, now I'm all warm and fuzzy inside. To fight for this city. To be the symbol of hope that the arrow never was. I am the Green Arrow. Are those new? These are new. I've got some new Funko figures. Excellent. Firestorm and Cyborg? Yes. Very nice. I like those. Yeah, you like those? I do. Yep. I'm going to have to get me some new ones now. They, You're competing with me. They just came out at the comic book store, so I was like, grab. Nice. Got to get these. because, Well, I had to get Cyborg because I'm a Titans fan. Right. So especially the Perez... Wolfman and Perez era mm -hmm. Titans and huge Firestorm fans. So, and this was like the Ronnie Raymond classic mm -hmm. Firestorm. So yep. I had, definitely had to get that. So Very nice. I like the white eyes. Yeah. And he's got the bandage wrapped outfit with the uh, Wolverine Band shoulder band pads. Bandage wrap. It's <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what I mean. There are electrons around an <laughs> atom. I know. Or a nucleus rather. I like the Wolfman Perez yeah. uh, Wonder Woman run as right. well. Yes. They're a good team. Well, you know, well, actually, Wolfman didn't write. That was George Perez writing that. Oh, was it? It was George oh. Perez writing and drawing the first two years of that. Okay. Then, then he just wrote it until like issue 60 or something, I believe. Okay. Because Jill Thompson took over as artist. Cool. So, yeah. But I love the Perez uh, Wonder Woman. As, as far as I'm concerned, it's the definitive of Wonder Woman. Okay. Love it. All right. So, Phantom Zone. Phantom Zone. Sorry about that, guys. We're, I think I might have to do a new version of the theme for the summer. We're going to, well, we're going to be, yeah, because we're getting close to our new fall season. We're going to have to do some new themes. Right. Exactly. And we're not covering any of the shows that are in the theme right now because yeah. they're all on hiatus. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to do a temporary. We can, do some, we can do some preacher quotes. That's right. Yeah. That'd be cool. That right? would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Lots of good lines on preacher. Very, very much so. So uh, episode 63. Episode 63 of the Fandom Zone from the week ending June 11th, 2016. <laughs> and Charles is laughing because I put that in the document instead of at the top of the document and I bolded it and he is I, laughing at me. I told her I, I was surprised that she didn't put in like 40 point font. To go like, hey, idiot, it's the week ending June 11th, 2016. Yes, because you guys have heard over the last couple of weeks that I have told them it's at the top of the document. So this week I put it inside. She's been busting my chops a little bit over that one. It's true. <laughs> I can take it. It's all right. And uh, well, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just sit here all cool. Oh, nice. Very nice. <laughs> He's got shades on. What are those shades? These are are these were Cleveland Indians giveaways. Oh, very nice. So yeah, but and they have little C's on the lenses. Can you see through them? <laughs> kind of. It's like looking through a golf ball because <laughs> they've got all these. Okay. They, they, yeah, they have these little like little like weird dots all oh, over. Oh, I them. see. So I it's see. like so it's covered in white in the front and then they have these little dots where you can actually see through and then a big red C over it for I the Cle Cleveland Indians but it was they like, look opaque from a distance but they're meshy yeah they were they were looks. giveaways during the game very nice which we won by the way so I was very oh, so, very cool yeah I got to take my nieces and nephew out to the ballpark at Progressive Field which used to be called Jacobs Field and we had a it was a beautiful evening and then we won the game and it was great so very nice 
And I'll it's show always you about cool when you go to a show and uh, go to a game and your team wins. And, well, oh. yeah, especially when you have your family in town. So mm-hmm. it's it's like, hey, everybody, we got to win. It's a good thing. Very nice. Very nice. So, yeah. I'm glad your vacay was good. It was. I just posted a bunch of photos on my Facebook page. So if anybody wants to check them out, look for the uh, Columbus, Cleveland, Putin Bay 2016 photo album. Very nice. Yeah, I saw some of them. Your family's very good looking. And then there's me. Your family, including you, (laughs) is very good looking. So stop it with that. All right, all right. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so what are we going to review this week, Karen? We are going to review the second episode of Preacher. Yes. And we are going to review Outcast episodes one and two. Not one, but two. That's right, since the second episode aired yesterday. <laughs> and we scrambled to watch it and get it reviewed. Quickly, today. yes. Yeah, we're uh, gonna, I don't know if we wanna, we're going to be, how long we're gonna be able, going to be able to keep that up. Yeah, I know. We might have to do a delayed. Yeah. Like one week late sort yeah. of thing. Well, yeah, because it's a little more, it's it's kind of last minute being on Friday night. Right. It and, is. And, then, and it's kind of I, a detailed show. <laughs> yeah, and I don't have Cinemax, so I have to watch it through alternative means. Mm-hmm, me too. <laughs> and uh, so I have to wait till Saturday after it posts. Right. right. Yeah. Uh Alternative means. <laughs> Alternative means. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so, shall we start with Preacher? Since Please, it was let's on do. a week ago. All right, so uh, episode 2C. Yes. And written by Sam Catlin, directed once again by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Excellent, Seth Rogen. So, I kind of I wonder if this he... is like part two of a two part pilot. That they split up into two episodes or something. Yeah, because it's see the difference or something like that, right? Next week yeah. is the other half of the right. phrase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't. The, I mean, it seems like a cliffhanger, but it doesn't really um, hang too much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, it it ends with him commanding the girl. Right. But the rest of the episode is is not really. I mean, it's part of the main arc, definitely, yes. but it doesn't hang too much except for the, the girl right um so what's our a b and c a b and c uh wheels on the bus and gone girl mm-hmm. those are his little cases of the week mm-hmm. uh night of the living dead yep which is interesting i thought yep. and bad to the bone question, question mark yeah all right and uh, I wanted to introduce some characters. Since we're on two different new shows, we're going to talk about some characters. And since we only have two shows, three if you count the two separate outcasts, we can expand a little bit on these shows. Yes. In this episode of Preacher, we had Jackie Earl Haley, mm-hmm. who you might know. Uh, he plays Odin Quinn Cannon in this mm-hmm. episode. You might know him from Human Target or Breaking Away or Bad News Bears or... Watchmen. Exactly. He played Rorschach and quite well. Yes. I might, I might add. Great job. He was really good job as Rorschach on Watchmen. So. Yeah. And I loved him on Human Target as well. Yes, he was. He was very Fantastic funny. on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, think, he I, also, I think Watchmen got him the Human Target gig. I think so too. <laughs> but he was great on Human Target. I miss that show. I thought it was I, great. too. I, Yeah, I was really upset that it ended after only two seasons. Yeah, me too. Uh, And in the upcoming Dark Tower and The Tick, which I think will be very cool. I didn't know he's in The Tick. Interesting. Yeah, he was just cast in that. Uh, I I don't know when it's airing. It says question mark, question mark, question mark, but he was cast in it already. Um, And he's going to be in the adaptation of Dark Tower with Idris Elba. Mm Mm-hmm. So... We'll see how that goes. I can't wait to watch that. Um, in this episode, uh, as Terry Loach, which was the mother of the young woman in the coma, uh, she's played by Bonita Fredericy. Mm-hmm. And you might know her from Chuck. She played General Diane Beckman. 
And she is married in real life to John Billingsley, who is on Enterprise. And I've mentioned Oh, her. yeah, from Dr. F- Dr. Flox on Enterprise. Correct. Yeah. Um, and she's done stuff with him a lot. She was on Intelligence, and he was in Intelligence. Um, she's been on lots of shows that he's also been in. It's kind of a running gag. And they appear at conventions together. Whenever oh, he's in a main convention, she goes as well. Um, and it, people want her autograph as well from being on Chuck and things like that. Well, I would hope so. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they appear together in a lot of stuff. And That's great. Yeah. she's. I love her whenever she's – she was on an episode of Parks and Rec and I was like, oh, it's Bonita. <laughs> so it was very cool. And then Graham McTavish, who is playing – so far, billed as the cowboy. Yeah, shouldn't be. Shouldn't that be Graham McTavish? Yeah, I'm sure it should be Graham McTavish. Graham McTavish. Yeah, um, but we know, and we're gonna let you in on the secret if you don't know. But he's the saint of killers, obviously. Yes, yes. Um, yes. Very important player in the, yes. in the preacher mythos. Yes. So watch. Uh, yeah, he's very surly, mm-hmm. uh, and. He's going to be more than Surly coming up. Oh, uh, yes. He's, he's on Outlander. He's in all of the Hobbit franchise so far. Yep. And uh, he does a lot of voiceovers for video games and um, and um, animated series and things like that. So uh, he's in many, many things that you probably haven't really noticed him in. But definitely Outlander. If you watch Outlander, you know him from that as well. Uh, you didn't see a lot of him in this episode. Like, no, it, it was just it was like a, a prologue tease, right, to the character. But it's, yeah, it's just kind of giving you a little, just a little chunk to uh, to pique your interest. Yeah, and this also tells you about a little bit about his. Um, otherworldliness i guess because this was in the way past yeah do we want to get into that a little bit well, since we're talking about him i don't know do we, do uh, we want well, to spoil well we could talk about what's in this episode okay sure because uh, I mean, we because that way we can at least kind of get everybody up to speed about what we can talk about okay well he um he's wandering yeah we're, it's, we, we're set in 1881 in the old west, the old uh, west. With, with some people maybe traveling um, yep. probably to California, I'm guessing. Yep. Nevada, California, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. To seek their fortune. And he comes upon them in in a very deserty looking area. And he's looking like, for medicine for his sick daughter. Right. And the people are very pious. Um, very... Um, like they're looking for blessings pretty much and everything is godly. Yeah, they're they're pretty naive about yes. what what the uh west has in store right. for them. Right. They think everything's going to be a blessing and mm-hmm. Oh, isn't it a great adventure to be out here? Right. Yeah. And and <laughs> and the world is good. Yes. Is 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 essentially And, and God will look after us and Right. Yeah. Right. And he doesn't agree with that philosophy, yeah. and he says so. <laughs> yeah, they have a disagreement about um, the guy asks uh, the cowboy mm-hmm. about whether if this they're living in a paradise, right? And he's like, no, right? I think he says something about this ain't no paradise, it, and that's pretty much yeah. That's pretty much all he says, right? And the next thing you see after he has this dinner, mm-hmm. that people have graciously invited him to um he you see him on his way i guess the next day yeah he's on a town into a town called ratwater right uh ratwater which i find which sounds like a just a charming little community right uh and he ambles by a tree where some indians are hanging and i guess they're scalped yes so they, they've been um, it's a hanging tree, but, right? Yeah. I'm guessing this is retaliation for something. For something, and he yeah. rides by them just to show us that yes, he's right. This is not a paradise, and no. he knows it. 
So whether those people come across things like that or not is a whole different matter. We won't see those people again, I'm guessing. But we will definitely see him. We'll definitely see him. And this is the kind of jaded thing that he is going through. I kind of wonder if they're going to just tease a little bit every episode until until he appears until he appears in the modern day. Maybe uh, because we really need to see what he goes through back then, don't We're we? Gonna, uh, yeah, it's interesting because we he appears in the modern in the comic book. He appears in the modern day first, mm-hmm. and then after quite some time, we get his backstory. Right. But I think here they're going to do the reverse. I think so too. And give us the backstory first. Which might be good. Yeah, because it'll it'll get you to appreciate him as a character so that when he does show up in the present, right. then it's like, "Oh crap." Right. Yeah, he, he he might be even more ominous if we get to know his backstory first. Yeah, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about a little bit. Yeah, and I also liked his um his own series. As well, because they did that spinoff series with yeah, like him alone. A mini, a mini series, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I think it'll be cool to kind of get that sort of perspective of him alone, and whether they roll any of that information into his. He's back. a really intriguing character in the comics. He is so deep. Yep. And three dimensional. So yeah, um, I can't wait to see yeah. more of him. If they if they had adapted this in the sixties. Clint Eastwood would have been perfect for this role. I guess so. I'm 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 partial. I'm not impartial because I yeah. lived near Carmel. Oh. And he was not my favorite person. I understand that. He uh, outlawed I'm, eating I'm s- ice cream on the street. Oh. Because it made a mess. That's a d bag move. Yeah. Uh, it was. Just, very short lived. Yep. And he also did this thing where you couldn't get on a plane until he was on the plane mm-hmm. and settled. Well, I'm speaking as a fan of the uh, Sergio Leone movies, like yeah, the I know. Uglies, so yeah. I just I'm. I just I understand. Yes. Me, yeah. I'm I'm talking about the 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 uh, 60s Clint Eastwood. Yeah, yeah. Not the no. modern day Clint He's Eastwood. Just a douchebag in real life. So, <laughs> okay. I I can't. I just can't separate it. I understand. I understand. But, All, right, yeah. mo- uh, All right, moving on. He would have been good. I think you're right. All right. So there's that. Uh, now let's talk about. Uh, I don't know what to talk about first. I guess let's get the wheels on the bus and Gone Girl out. Might of as the- well. Yeah, let's just yeah. Let's just go right down the. Uh, okay. So wheels on the bus is the pedophile. Mm-hmm. And Gone Girl is the girl who's in a coma. Right. And these are the two people that he is, I guess, assigned to help in this episode. Well, one of the guys is part of his congregation. Right. And uh, he name? wants help. Linus. Because, Linus. Right. Because he is desirous of a girl who's on his bus. Exactly. He's basically like... It's a horrible thing waiting to happen. Right. And he's confiding in Jesse about his desires. And yeah. he's like, well, uh, Jesse, uh, you know, you, because, you know, you're, you're my preacher that, you know, this is all confidential, right? Right. Which is always a bad sign. Yeah. And so he's telling him that he wants to have sex with a young girl on his bus. Mm-hmm. And Jesse is... So horrified by this. He's like, his knuckles are clenched, ready Mm -hmm. to deck this guy. It's all I can do to keep from decking this guy. Right. And rightly so. Understandably, yes. Yeah. So he is tortured by this Mm -hmm. through the episode. And then it culminates in, I don't want to, I mean, there's not a whole lot of detail in this. It culminates with him going to the guy's house and uh, confronting him, confronting him, and then saying, "Forget her." In that, when using command, using the using word, the word yeah, yeah, forget her, and he forgets everything about her, right? And he's like, "What so, did you do to my? What did you do? Why can't you know? Like, what? What did you do to my mind? Or what? Right, yeah. right. But hopefully, that will actually stop the problem from happening. 
And, and then Gone Girl is the girl who's in a coma. Mm-hmm. And uh, did they say what had happened to her? They yeah, just showed well, her well, they, they showed her head, but it's implied that she was kicked because they, the mother talked about her loving horses. Okay. So, so, so my guess is that she was kicked in the head by a horse. Okay. Fell or it, and was kicked by a horse. Something like that. Something happened that it caused brain damage and her ha- head was caved in. Right. Okay. So she is very hurt and her mother realizes that she's probably never going to recover. Mm-hmm. But Jesse goes to, I guess, give comfort to the family. He brings a casserole. I'm sorry. That Take- Emily that Emily gives him. Right. <laughs> Uh, and the mother is, she says she's grateful for the casserole. That's the best thing he could have done. And then she says she'll feed it to the dogs because. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's. Well, the, she's, she's understandably j- jaded by all this. Right. And because, yeah, the, the preacher can't pray. Yeah. It's like the kind <laughs> word, she says the kind words won't really do anything. She's, she's still going to be lying there. Right. So Jesse is, she's kind of tortured by this because it's like, well, she's right. Mm-hmm. The kind of, the words aren't, it's, words are empty. Mm-hmm. So she's not going to wake up. So this is why he's kind of tortured by this and, and takes action to do something about it. Right. So then at the end of the episode, after he's said these words to the guy mm-hmm. and gotten him to forget the girl with the command words... He goes to the girl and says, open your eyes. That's what he says, right? Open yes. your eyes. Yes. And that's where the episode ends. Right. And, so, and if you saw uh, the preview for next week, then you know that, well, she opens her eyes, but what yeah, else? What else? There. Yeah. What's right. The, yeah. So we'll, we'll so, see. Now, so now her eyes are drying out, basically. Right. He he needs to get more specific. Yes, as it were. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a monkey's paw, you know. You leave those loopholes. Yeah, open your eyes and be what you used to be would be better. Yes. Uh, so he needs to learn how to use those powers. Uh, so now we have night. Well, okay, let's go to bad to the bone because okay. this is Tulip. Yeah. Um, Tulip is trying to get him to. G- Get back into the business of being bad. Jesse, yeah. Right. Yeah. And she calls him a bad, bad man. Yeah. Well, first she, sh- well, she sh- shows up at the beginning of the episode because he's Jesse is baptizing his congregation. Right, which is a holdover from last week's episode. Right, right. But she willingly go- undergoes the baptism right, just to get in front of him and get in his head. Give him a little dig. Yeah. So yeah. she's all wry okay. girl s- smiling and right. yeah, teasing. Yeah. I know. Flirting and with him what? during the baptism, which is just gonna, a tulip move. You're going to make fun of me again. Mm-hmm. But seeing her in the Warcraft movie the other day, <laughs> and seeing her again in this, yeah. I'm like, okay, she's so different in this. But anyway. Ruth Nega, the actress, by the way. Correct. Uh, Because she plays a queen and she's all regal and very serene and quiet. And now seeing her again. Not here. I know. It's so different. It shows your range. I know. She's great. So she's in front of Jesse and she is really trying to tempt him. And after Mm -hmm. the baptism and he is unaffected, (laughs) she needs to do better. Yes. So she steps her game up, kidnaps him, and <laughs> shackles him. Yeah. To I guess what is it a table or something? Yes. What is it that something, she shackles him to? I think that was a table. Something big in his yeah. house. Yeah, and she, she leaves him a, like a hacksaw or something. Right. To saw his way out of. No key, just a hacksaw. Yeah. Right. right. Uh, and it's a huge shackle. Around his so it's going to take him a long time to cut through it. Yeah, it's one of those, uh, yeah. it's like a cuff shackle mm-hmm. with a big, thick chain attached to it. And she's trying to get him to go back into the business of, uh, I guess, thievery Right. with her. And she says she has the map 
and she just needs to get the information with him mm-hmm. to pull whatever. Yeah, apparently. Off. Yeah, apparently she's got a plan in mind. Mm-hmm. She's got this map to get to pull off the heist or something. Right. And it's like Ocean's Eleven. I need you. Right. To do, help me with this job to pull right. it off. We're not getting a lot of detail yet, but she definitely needs him. Mm-hmm. In order to get the information she needs. So she is very, <laughs> very uh, insistent yes. in her trying to get him to go with her. That's a good word. Yeah. And he is still not wanting to do this. <laughs> he, he rebukes her yet again. Yes. <laughs> and... Uh, what I liked about this part was him, she leaves his cigarettes there within reach, which is funny because she knows he can't deal without his cigarettes. Right. And he's smoking a cigarette and trying to saw through the chain after she leaves. And then <laughs> Eugene shows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, uh, who did this to you? And he says, I did this to myself and his... His cigarette is just hanging loose out of his mouth. and yep, he's dangling, he's dangling out right, of his lip. Right. And uh, he says, well, do you need any help? And uh, he says, no. <laughs> he's still sawing. And then Eugene just starts talking to him. Like, yeah. he's not really doing anything. <laughs> and he says. He's like, well, okay, I'll just you know, hang out then. Chat. Yeah. yeah. And well, he to, says, be, to be fair, he did offer. Yes, he did. But Jess, Jesse wouldn't take a bump on it. So she's like, okay, I'll just hang out then. Is right. It- so I'll just stand here and talk to you while you're incapacitated. And, right, right. And you can't go anywhere. And he, he tells him that, you know, I don't think the bat- baptism worked. Uh, <laughs> I, I lied to you. I have a crisis of conscience. And I mean, he doesn't say it that way because he's not that articulate, no. obviously. But he definitely is is having a crisis of conscience, and mm-hmm. poor Jesse is trying to saw his way through the chains, and, and there's... Well, he makes this comment that he would always be the same. Right. So, and that's what kind of, like, triggers things in Jesse's head about Linus. Right. So then he goes off to deal with Linus. Right. And after he saws through yeah, the chains. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's that, and uh, we'll see how far yeah. Tulip can get. Oh, speaking of Eugene, though, mm-hmm. we should mention that Cassidy got to see yeah. Eugene for the first time. And we get his nickname. Yeah, Well, yeah, he's just like, you, you know that fellow's got the face of an arse, right? Mm-hmm. And in the comics, Eugene's name is Arseface. Because he's named that by Cassidy. So, Correct. So this is why that... Uh, Eugene has a UK sounding name, right? As opposed to as opposed to just ass face, correct? Which would be fitting for an American character, right? And poor Cassidy is is really taken aback, like he stumbles when he sees Eugene. (laughs) Yes, and uh, it's it's kind of played for laughs, but it's also kind of tragic. Yes. As well, because Cassidy's seen a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, dude, previous episode grabbed a cow. Now, while his intestines were splayed everywhere. Right. In a big crater that he jumped out of a plane. Mm -hmm. But Eugene's face is what bothers him. Right. It makes him stumble in a bar, Eugene's face. So... You can see exactly what kind of thing bothers now, him. Now, did you notice that Eugene was obviously, he, he saw Cassie's reaction. He was a little hurt by yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So he's just and like, oh, you know, he, he lowers kind of, his head. And... Yeah, that's a recurring theme for Eugene through the comics is right. his despair at at failing to kill himself mm-hmm. and this being the outcome of that. So he has issues Deep, deep seated issues. Yeah, especially concerning his father. Mm-hmm. Because all he wants is his father's love. And Which his, is why he tried to kill himself in the first place, kind but, of. But his father is just, you know, couldn't care less about him. 
right. feels now stuck with him. It's like, oh my, oh great, now I have this son who has a face like a butthole. Right. So, right. great, of course But he feels like he has to take care of him. Mm-hmm. Oh, and my comatose wife, or, you know, right. my, my, yeah, zonked out wife. Right. So the dad is just unpleased with the whole situation and mm-hmm. mean. A terrible dad to begin pretty, with. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, and but now some, he's worse. But somehow Eugene turned out, for the most part, pretty okay. Yeah, on the surface, at least. Yeah, okay. well, I mean, but he, but he tries. Right. Oh, yeah. So, it, like, he's a either, decent human being. Yeah. So either he became that after the gunshot. Yeah. Wound, the self-inflicted wound, or he was always really that good of a good-natured. Right. I think he was just, always just good. just wanted attention. Right. And I think he's very depressed because of his father. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't negate the fact that he's a decent person. Right. It almost seems like he's more depressed over his relationship with his father than he is his facial condition. Oh yeah, I think that's it. Mm-hmm. His father, really. I mean, I think he's trying to make the best of Yeah. his I guess it's a handicap. His d- disfigurement. Yeah, there you go. You're welcome. Uh, and it is kind of a handicap because he, he has issues with eating and mm-hmm. things like that. So anyway. Yep. So now on to Night of the Living Dead. And this is the most complicated part of this episode right. where the men show up, the two English de, guys. De Blanc and Fiore. Right. Now, we don't get a lot of backstory on them. But not, they show up. Not at and, first. Uh, we get some a little bit later, though. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, they show up, and they are going for Jesse. Right. Now, these are the guys that have shown up at all the little churches. They've been watching him. Right. To see. Well, they've been at the other churches, though, right? Haven't we seen them at the other churches? Where yes. The, yeah, they went to the yeah, Afri- they went to the African church, and right. yeah, yeah. Now they're very interested in Jesse because they know he has the Genesis in him, but mm-hmm. it, it didn't kill him. So they want to know what's going on with him. But uh, they come at him. Now Jesse, meanwhile, is passed out on the floor in the church after Cassidy gives him this really strong right Irish drink. Right. And Cassidy does this and then takes his wallet and his keys and absconds with the car. And I'm guessing he just wants to go on the run. Right. But he gets a little bit of a conscience and decides to come back. And it's a good thing because he shows up right at the right time to stop these guys from killing Jesse. Yeah, using a chainsaw, no less. Right. And uh, so I don't know whether they're going to cut him apart and like try to and get see what the Genesis would do. Looks? I don't know what I don't, uh, I don't well, know what their plan was, but I don't know either. They have like weird devices that they hook up. Right. And they were a... doing incantations mm-hmm. and... and it didn't quite work. No. So not at all. They were sing songing and it was, doing... like a, it was a lullaby. Right. So he shows up and he sees the crazy dudes and uh, he he takes them on all while Jesse is passed out on the floor. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a brutal brawl. Oh, horrible! Pews are locked, knocked over. You know, blood everywhere. Blood everywhere. Yep. And he makes the guy with the chainsaw cut off his own arm, mm-hmm. which is awesome, by the way. Right. <laughs> and you see the decapitated but- arms still holding the chainsaw and it goes and the bumping chainsaw, towards Jesse. Yeah, yeah, the chainsaw is still running. So it's like this big cartoonish gag right. where the arm is taken off. The chainsaw, chainsaw is still running. So it's on the floor and it's right. going, moving toward Jesse. I would equate it towards like someone being on one of those lumber yeah. saws where they're going you know, slowly towards the big saw and it's going to cut them in half, except for this is a chainsaw with an arm attached and it's rumbling towards Jesse. Or like like Jaws where it's going. Right. And of course, Cassidy stops it in time to save Jesse. Mm -hmm. And the two guys are, they're dead. They're dead, but it's like, Hey, I've got a chainsaw. Yeah. (laughs) 
So let's uh, let's, let's get let's use this for body disposal. Damage control. Yeah. So he's like he hacks up the pieces. He puts them into this trunk. Right. And then he's go just about to take it outside, but mm -hmm. bum, 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 it's daylight. Right. So uh, and we know that uh, that is a weak spot for him. And he kind of looks up at God, going, "Of right. course it is. Uh, <laughs> Thank, yeah. yeah, of course. Thanks." So he so, has, so has to wait till sundown. Right, sundown. You better take care. Nice. You find you've been run. So he, yeah, sundown finally happens. He and he loads up the trunk. So he he drives off to the somewhere you know, cons far away or whatever. Buries mm -hmm. these guys. Right. But then, dun dun dun. dun, dun. They turn up. Later on. Later on. Yeah, they show up. Well, well, they're getting interrogated by Sher thing. Sheriff Root. Yep. And they claim like they're like all alive and and perfectly intact. Right. And then they're like, they claim that they're with the government. Mm-hmm. So you're like, wait, what? These Cassie just buried these guys. Why right. are they still alive? Right. Exactly. And they have English accents. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I find is funny is all the people that are immortal on this show are from Europe. Right. <laughs> So far. Except for the Europeans playing Americans. <laughs> That's true. Because, I'm talking about yeah. fictional. <laughs> because Graham McTavish took her American jobs away. Right. But isn't they, Ralph, isn't, um, isn't Ruth Nega also? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, she is. Because she has an English accent in yeah. Warcraft too. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Because humans in Warcraft are English. Oh. Just so you know. Okay. They all have English. As opposed to the Empire, where all the bad guys are British. Uh-huh. That's right. I'm sorry. The Alliance are bad. No. No. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm not bored. <laughs> you don't get that. Obscure Warcraft references. Yeah, I know. For the Horde, Loktar, Gwar. I'll just say that right now. You love you. She, just, just to put it mildly, Karen loved the Warcraft movie. Okay. Loved it. I, I talked after we recorded Next Stop Everywhere. I talked to Charles mm -hmm. about my love of the Warcraft movie, and he was happy that I enjoyed it, but he kind of made fun of me a little bit. I did not make fun of you. I know, but I know you thought be, I was. Be, be really... honest, I was not making fun of you. I know. You I specifically I was... told you I was not making fun of you. I know. I know. I just, I love that you were geeking about it. Okay. That's so cool. I was not making. Fun I was of geeking out about it, she and was, I'm still she, really she was all self conscious about it. So, so, like, worried that I would tease her about it, and it's yeah. like, or like I was bored by it. Was, he was you know. happy that I was really amped yeah. about seeing the movie. Yeah, yeah. I was glad you had something but, you went out and enjoyed. Yeah, but he doesn't understand, so I have to say that at least that he was just kind of sitting there going, "I don't get it." <laughs> I get it, but no, but, I mean, like but, you don't understand details and all no, that. No, no, no. So, I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't play the game. Right. So therefore, the subtleties are going to be lost on me. Right. <laughs> exactly. The, so the, when the, I say the nuances of the game are lost. So when I say Loktar Ogar, some of our audience might know, but yeah. you just go, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Hi, Firestorm. <laughs> I know Firestorm. You're trying to get us back on topic. Yes. Very sorry. Okay, so um, Night of the Living Dead. They come back at the end of the episode. They're being interrogated, and uh, it's weird because they were buried, and we don't know how they came back. Yep. Right? Yeah, pretty much. So it, it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. Until, more questions on questions. Mm -hmm. And so, so, far, so far, we're getting more questions than we are answers. But it's only the second episode. We're supposed to kind of get questions right, so far. Right. Mm -hmm. but, Although we are getting answers about his his command words. You are, yeah, we're, yeah, we're seeing we're some learning more about that, that front. So, yeah. And Jesse's starting to figure it out. Right. Which is good. Yeah. Right. Okay. Anything what else? What am I missing? I don't think you're missing anything. Okay, good. 
Uh, what do you give this episode? Uh, I give this one. I enjoyed this episode a lot. Uh, I think it was a little more um, mainstream, or as far as accessible to new viewers mm-hmm. than the pilot Sorry. was. Mm-hmm. So I give it eight and a half uh, unsupervised chainsaws. Very nice. I give it eight pot holders. I agree with you. Yes. Uh, I think it was more accessible. Although, if you're squeamish at all. Right. But, you know, this is the, this is on the same network that airs The Walking Dead. I know. So, keep that in mind. So, if you watch The Walking Dead, you're okay yeah, with it. Yeah, so you should be. Yeah, it's pretty much, right. this should be the same audience. Or pretty yeah. close to it. Exactly. That this is not for the squeamish. This show. No, That's all I can it's, say. It's not for the kitties. It's not. But it's so worth watching. These episodes that we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> these are all. Yeah, we're we've definitely drifted into mature readers or mature viewers yeah, territory here. Exactly. Yeah. So if you so if you're looking for comic book shows uh, to with watch with your kids, this is yeah. We're kind of. Uh, you might have to wait until September. Yeah. These are these are for These are more for the adults. Yeah. So these are more on the horror or, side of things. Yeah, so or at least, you know, older teenagers. There you go. So yeah. But they are excellent. Yeah. Excellent. excellent. Okay. So, okay. So moving outcast. on. Outcast. Outcast. Yes. They're now Give a quick background. Uh, Outcast, for those who don't know, is an image comic series, another one, by Robert Kirkman, the creator of The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been around that long. I think it's only been out for like about a year and a half. 2014. The end of 2014. Right. And then here we are in the middle of 2016. So that sounds mm-hmm. about right. I think it's around issue 18 right now. But yet, about right. you know, but yet we already have a TV series. Mm-hmm. So, um, and this first season is going to be 10 episodes. So really, if you've read like the first 10 issues of the comic, you probably will have read the, you know, that's the entire first season. Right. There's not much difference. And they seem to be adapting pretty closely to the comic book so far. Yeah, they do. Because I've Uh, only read the first six issues so far. I have more to read, but I haven't read them yet. Yeah. The first episode is the first and second issue. Mm Mm-hmm. Of the comic, and then the second episode is the third issue of the comic. So if you're looking to get into the comic after watching the show, <laughs> um, it should be pretty easy to track down and oh yeah, and jump on. Now would be you know a good time to do now it. Now would be the time to buy it. Yeah, really. It gets really popular. Pretty much. Um, and there's actually already three trade paperbacks out, so you mm-hmm. can, yeah get into those. three collected volumes. Yep. And um, I actually would recommend you read it. Hmm. Uh, I don't think it would really ruin the show. No, for no, no. I think it might help you understand it a little better too. Mm-hmm. I think it's so almost too. like it would almost be like a companion to the TV show. Yeah, sure. It'll help you see nuances in the show. I think stuff you might have overlooked. Right. Right. I agree. So the first episode, uh, "Darkness Surrounds Him," mm-hmm. which is the title of the first issue, by the way. Right. So who we got? Oh, so we got written by none other than Robert Kirkman. Mm-hmm. And directed by Adam Wingard. Alrighty. Um, I have The Devil Inside as the A story. Mm-hmm. B story's Battle Pastor. And that <laughs> is a subtle nod to Robert Kirkman's first comic book ever, which was called Battle Pope. But you gotta love that title. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the C story is Step by Step. So... Uh, I want to also go into some details about the cast here. Mm -hmm. Um, Patrick Fugit, who plays Kyle, he was the main character in Almost Famous, the boy who does all the reporting in Almost Famous. Okay. Uh, Ren Schmidt, who plays Megan, was most recently the love interest of um, Reese on Person of Interest, Iris. Okay. Uh, Philip Glenister. Yes. Reverend Anderson. Um, if you don't rec- recognize him, it's because he has an American accent here. <laughs> yeah, but, it threw me because, um, and you're gonna probably gonna talk about this, but I was a huge fan of the the BBC series Life on Mars. Yep, me too. And he plays and he plays that. he plays DCI Gene Hunt. That's right. And he is 
like one of the great TV characters on that he show. Is. He is so good. He is perfect. He's because he's a seventies like British um, detective. And so he's like, you know, he's punching people, beating the crap out of them, mm-hmm. and he's tossing off one liners like nobody's business. And he's yeah. so fun to watch on that right. show. And I caught just a hint of that Irishy kind of It creeps in, doesn't it? Yeah, it does a little bit. Because he, he oh. starts in that southern drawl. Right. And that's kind of something I want to talk about because I don't know if you noticed, but this show is supposed to be set in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. And it's filmed in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. So the characters seem to have a much more Southern accent on the show. Mm-hmm. They draw quite a bit. And, right. And being from Ohio, I know that a lot of people in West Virginia do not talk like that. Right. There's a, it, there's, do, there's a little bit, but it's not that severe. Yeah. They could work on the accents a little bit. That kind a of, little bit. But that's something like a, a local person might, like me, would catch, but it wouldn't really affect anybody else. It it or, gives a bit of an atmosphere to the show, though. Yeah. So I can see why they went with it. But it definitely it does feel it. more Southern, especially, you know, with you know, the emphasis with the, you know, the going to church and all that. And so, right. Yeah. I mean, I get why they did it. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that is exactly the credit that I put here for Philip Glenister is the UK version of Life on Mars and Ashes to Ashes. He played Gene Hunt. Uh, that is what he's most well known for. So I put that. Watch there. him in those those two oh, shows. He's so mandatory Life. viewing. It's so good. So good. Uh, David Denman, who plays Mark Holter, his brother-in-law. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was Roy on the US version of The Office. So if you recognize him from that. Um, that's Pam's ex-fiance on okay. there. Um, Norville, the neighbor, um, who was he played by? Oh, I don't I have him. Know. I don't have his name. Okay. Sorry about that. No, it's, yeah, sorry about I that. I just put his name. Um, Josh is the possessed boy. Uh, Grace Zabris- Zabriski? Yes. Okay. Yeah. She plays Mildred. Yeah, and obviously oh. being a Twin Peaks geek, um, this is a big deal for me because she played... Uh, Leland Palmer's wife, Sarah Palmer, mother of Laura Palmer on the show, who had the like the psychic visions, and uh, definitely, yeah, definitely a great character actress. David Lynch loves using her in his films as these really offbeat, dark characters. So, getting her here for Outcast, I think it's going to be leading somewhere with Mildred. I don't know where, but they're. You don't get an actress like Grace Zabriskie unless you're going to do something with her. Okay, cool. The character. And I know her from John Doe, Mm -hmm. so I put that. And she's also been on Seinfeld off and on. I remember her being like a a recurring character there. Um, Reg E. Cathy plays Chief Giles, and he's from House of Cards and The Wire. Or is it Giles? I don't know. Okay, I think it's Giles. You're right. Yeah. Um, And Brent Spiner... Yeah, if you don't know who Brent Spiner is, just go You're, home. You need to stop listening to us. Go yeah. home. Star Trek The Next Generation, duh. Yeah. Um, or and, Independence Day, even. Yeah. He is not named in the show, mm-hmm. but we're going to call him Night, Night Court, if you remember not, him. Oh, yeah, Night remember, Court. Remember he was on Night Court? Ah, uh, sir. Yeah, yeah. I do. He played this real, like, southern top guy on Night Court. Yep. Love With it. With his wife. Right. American Gothic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All they needed was the pitchfork. Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, so we're going to call him Sydney because that's who he is. Okay. Shall we not ruin it for the people that haven't read the comic? N- not yet. Okay, so he, we're going to call him Sydney. Not yet, but definitely he's a player. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him. All right. So the first one is okay. uh, The Devil Inside, Battle Pastor, and Step by Step. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to have to. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. All right. So, um, of course, the main story is the possessed kid, Josh. Joshua, yeah. Yeah. Um, first, we have Kyle, who has just come home. And... 
He's living in his old house Mm -hmm. where his mother was an abuser. Right. And we get little flashes of his past life throughout the episode. Yeah, you get um, to you get to hint that Kyle is hiding out, right, from life. Right, he has retreated into himself. He is um, kind of a hermit, mm-hmm. um, and he wasn't this way. I mean, he was this way all you know ever since he was a kid and abused and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's nothing new, but he did come back to town just recently, mm-hmm. um, and his sister in law is, you know, trying to yeah. Or stepsister. Yeah, sorry. adopted sister, yeah. Right. Meg. Uh, right. Yeah. Is, she, uh, is trying she, to pull him out of his shell. and Yeah, she shows up just out of the blue and is like, okay, your life sucks. Come on out. Right. Get out of the house. Get out of your pajamas. Right. We're going shopping. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, he doesn't have any food in the house. Yeah. yeah. We're going to Piggly Wiggly. Right. And that is, of course, the step-by-step storyline. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump ahead. No, don't worry about that. Um, so she takes him to the store and tries to get him food. And then on the way home, she drives past his house and tries to take him for dinner. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about that a little more in a minute. Yeah. Well, let's, um, get, let's get back to Joshua. Right. So he is called upon by the preacher to go and and see this boy, Josh. Yeah. Well, can we because, talk about can we talk about the opening with Joshua because it was really cool? Sure. Cause yeah. I want because Joshua is we we the show opens with Joshua watching this roach on, crawling yeah. up the wall. Yeah. And he's really intrigued by it. So you're like, okay, what's up with this kid being really fascinated by this roach, right? Right. Then all of the sudden, he Jeez. takes he headbutts this roach. Ugh smears it all over the wall, all over his face. With his head, yeah. With and then face. rolls like rolls his face around in it and then eats the roach. Right. And out. he comes out of his room eating the roach still and his mom and, says And as you sit there going, WTF Right. Did I just watch? Right. And his mom says that he can't eat the chips. Yeah. Because he's all crunching. Yeah. Right. And then he eats part of his finger. Yeah, yeah. Right apparently, of- yeah. He's like he's munching on the chips, and then like I accidentally bites one of his fingers, and he's like, "Mmm, yummy, yummy, nom yeah. nom 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 nom." Right. And uh, yeah, the mother's obviously horrified. Sure. As we are, Who as all be? of us are <laughs> watching this, going, "Holy, I was definitely holy crap! What's up with that?" Right. So, yeah, that it's, it's a great. It was a great opening. It was shocks great. shocks you perfectly shocking horrifying it's, and, and yes this is horror this is a horror show in case you were wondering right <laughs> and I think like a million times better than American Horror Story and well, those this, other this shows. is more traditional this, this is traditional horror yeah and also subtle I like American Horror I Story think. but uh, I think this is more traditional Exorcist type horror. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the pastor also knows about Kyle's uh, upbringing mm-hmm. and the the stuff with his mother, which I think has been kind of hidden from the town, right? I mean, it's, they have. I, really... I think it's like a dirty little secret, right? Because everybody, like all the ladies, you know, like when Kyle and Megan go to the grocery store, all everybody's whispering is like they watch Kyle walking down the aisles, talking right. about him behind his back. Right. And they also Cause they think kinda, that he's a wife beater. Right. They And they don't know that his wife was also possessed, possessed by whatever right. this was. But they, well, that he killed, that he beat up his kid. Right. So. They think, yeah, so they, because his wife left him. Right. Took their daughter. Right. And And he, and apparently Kyle has like no custody. Right. Zero. Can't call or anything. Yeah. Can't have any contact with his daughter. Right. Which is another reason he shut himself off from life Mm -hmm. because he's depressed. Right. So we know that there was something hinky going on and he only did what's right. Right. But so it's really interesting that okay, Kyle's mother has been was possessed and abused him. 
Right. And then apparently Kyle's wife was possessed. Mm hmm. And for some reason, Kyle ended up hitting their daughter. Right. So well, he she, pulled she, Allison off of right. the daughter. And so, so there was, was the a daughter. Huge so was the daughter possessed at some point? Maybe? No, Allison was. Okay. That, well, I know Allison was, but, it, but there was a huge scuffle. Yeah. So it just probably happened in the. But obviously, it's all centered around Kyle. Right. At least for the time being. But yet, Kyle I has mean, not other been possessed are. himself. Right. But there's something going on there because we see in these two episodes, um, I'll, I'll blend them just a hair right here. We see this blackness go from the possessed person's mouth into Kyle's mouth. Right. Or vice versa. I'm not quite sure which yep. because it doesn't really say which goes where. Um, it could be something going from Kyle into the possessed person. On the show. It almost looked like the, the, the possessed person was sucking life force out of him. Out of Kyle, right. Right. Uh, and then in the second episode, we see the black stuff come out of his mother like it comes out of Josh in the first episode. Right. And it tries to uh, choke Kyle like a noose around his neck. As a kid. So, as a kid. Right. Yeah. So we're not quite sure, but that might have something to do with why it's following him mm -hmm. because of this contact he had with it as a youth. Could be. So anyway. Obviously, the, obviously to be continued on that scale. Right, dot, yeah. dot. Uh, so he, uh, we see little tiny bits and pieces mm -hmm. in the first episode. There's more in the second episode about the backstory with his mother. Right. Um, so we but see, we, but, we, but we find out that Reverend Anderson, is, 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 this is the battle pastor segment, I guess. We're right. Saying. So that he knows about his past. Yeah. And he knows that Kyle had something to do with the darkness coming out of his mother. So he takes Kyle to see Josh mm -hmm. and he is successful in getting this, blackness out of josh the second time he the second does yes i was just going to point that out but yeah you're right because yeah the first time uh reverend anderson he's doing the whole like you know holy like the, water. The, the power of christ compels you right bit right not working no Doesn't although work. some weird things happen uh he floats and there's yeah. you know it's obviously something is be possessing this kid but, but it's not getting it out of him no, but that life force thing happens the first time. Right. And so Kyle realizes he's got to do something. And so they go a second time, mm -hmm. and um, Reverend Anderson asks him, what did you do with your mother? Right. Do the same thing. And so he walks through the steps. Well, the light hurt her. So he rips so off he, the curtains off the yeah, windows. Off the windows. Mm -hmm. And he makes sure the kid is in the light. Mm -hmm. And then he said, and then I hit her. Yeah. And that is something that Reverend Anderson is not so kosher with. Right. But once the kid starts fighting, Reverend Anderson can't really do much about it. So Kyle does end up hitting him, which is something that is <coughs> a little unsettling. Stinky, unsettling. Yeah. Yes. yeah, it's hard to watch. Yeah. But there's got to be does. a better way. There's got to be a better way to get this demon out of yeah. kids instead of punch by instead of punching them. Right, and but it does ultimately work. the The stuff does come out of the kid, and it goes to the ceiling. Right now, there was a bit important bit though, because while the, the oh the blood the blood yes sorry yeah it's uh, the uh, Kyle is fighting with possessed kid Joshua. Uh, Joshua bites him on, right. the, on the hand right. and blood leaks out of Kyle's hand into the, Joshua's mouth. Right. And apparently it's this blood which forces the demon right. out of him. Uh, and it, like, God. so he turns into like, you know, like old faithful and spews this black, right. black and stuff toward the ceiling. So hitting his mother probably did the same thing. Right. Blood came blood. out of Kyle and went to her mouth. So the hitting isn't the thing. It's the blood. Sorry, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the thing comes out of Josh and goes to the ceiling and does this weird, right, nasty 
it looks like it's fallen, but up instead of down. Yeah, it's, and, a, it's uh, the nastiest black gunk. Oh, it's a, it's like the stuff you you when you if your sink's clogged. Oh yeah, it does look like that. And, does and, you know? And you and you get in there and you you try and get all that gunk out of it. Right. That's and it's that, that that's what it looks like. That chunky, grayish chunky, black, grayish black chunky stuff. Right. That gives you ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Looks, yeah. That yeah. It is. And it comes out of him, and Josh is, his face is beaten, but he's he, you know, Kyle is cradling him in his arms, and the mother comes in and the kid goes mom yeah so, so apparently, apparently he's okay he's okay but you know the mom sees him and of course his brother-in-law shows up yeah. and he wants to arrest him because the brother-in-law is not happy yeah. he doesn't like the guy yeah it's it's the d-bag brother-in-law right um what's his name he mark. wants to mark. arrest him. mark right yeah he wants to arrest him because he doesn't like the dude. He thinks the dude is a kid beater. Right. And once he shows up and sees the kid yep. eaten, Does, he uh, doesn't want Kyle around his daughter. Right. Right. Kyle. Even though Kyle is not a kid beater, but but Mark is a Mark doesn't know this. Tell me. Right. Mark, Mark hasn't dialed in yet about what's really going on. Right. But. He doesn't wait for the story. He sees the beaten kid. He yeah. sees Kyle. He puts Kyle in handcuffs and puts him in the back. And Chief Giles, Giles, is yeah, that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. He comes out to to um, Mark and he says, look, the mom's not going to press charges. You can do whatever you want, but he's he's going to be let go anyway. So you might as well yeah. let him go now. Mm-hmm. And, and Mark Mark's is not happy. Unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he gets let go and... Mark is all petulant, turning his book closed and yep. stomping around. Uh, he wants any excuse to put this guy away. He wants him. I hated this character so much in the comic. Mark, yeah. Yeah, Mark. So I, I keep wondering, though, why doesn't Reverend Anderson go, Mark, dude, he's helping me fight the devil. I know. Because we need that character. I understand that, but still, yeah. it's just. Like, well, I mean, that's why. <laughs> like, I, I can make this a lot easier on Kyle and everybody by just saying, explaining what's going on. Right. Well, I think if we were to think about this in terms of real life, uh-huh. Reverend Anderson would assume that no one would believe what's going on anyway, and he wouldn't want Kyle saddled with that disbelief. Right. So he probably wouldn't say anything. So then why doesn't he like arrest Reverend Anderson? Because he's right. there. Right. So why is he just going because after Because he wants to arrest Kyle. I understand that. But you would think that, well, if I'm going to arrest him Kyle, I should arrest Reverend Anderson too, right? Right. He just wants to arrest Kyle. Exactly. That's all. Exactly. Right. But Reverend Anderson doesn't tell him because he just, he knows that. People yeah. wouldn't understand. He doesn't go around telling everyone that Kyle. No, but just like I was <laughs> needing him to save this boy's soul. Right. That's all he has to say. Right. And again, do you think Mark would believe him? No. Yeah, I don't yeah, think so yeah. either. He would still try and arrest Kyle anyway. Right, right. Okay, so that's pretty much what happens in this episode. Yep. He saves the kid. He uh, yep. tries to have a relationship with his stepsister, but he knows it's going to be pretty impossible yep. because of the brother-in-law. Oh, and the demon does tease like the big something big coming. Right. He says the great merge cannot be stopped. Right. So we have a ticking clock of through mer- Josh. Through Josh. Joshua. Yeah. Right. The the t- the great merge, whatever that is. Right. Exactly. So. Um, and what was the other? Oh, and we do get a little scene with the pastor outside of his church with some hooligans. Yep. And they've painted a devil's face on the outside of the church. And one of the kids stumbles on his bike and he kind of chuckles. Yep. Because they're not as tough as they yeah. want to be. And, you know, he talks about like, well, I guess I'll just leave it there. Turn the other cheek. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't stay there. Too and then, long. and then there's episode two, <laughs> correct, <laughs> where his cheek does not stay turned. No, 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 no. Okay, so what do you give the first episode? First episode, um, I thought it was a very atmospheric opening. Mm. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, it definitely sets the tone. Definitely. Um, so, like, and it, it captures the tone perfectly from the comic. Yeah, I thought so. So, too. Um, so I give this one eight and a half out of ten. Spatters of black goo on the ceiling. Very nice. And we are copacetic. Mm-hmm. I thought it also got the exact tone of the comic, and I thought it did a great job of combining the first two comics into an hour. Right. It was 55 minutes, which I couldn't believe they managed to do that, both comics in there. Um, I gave it eight and a half boxes of organic cereal (laughs) to make it poops good, as his sister-in-law said. (laughs) Right, right. When was the last time you ate a vegetable? Yeah. Yeah. After she looks in his yep. fridge and there's like nothing in there. Right. It's like you eat like a little kid. Yeah. Now I think I think that's partly because I think in his head he's still kind of he's a little still a kid. kid. Well, when he's in that house, he is. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, he all I, he can see is or like the, he wants to be a kid. He wants to be that innocent kid before what happened to his mother happened to his. Those mother. are only the only good times he ever had. Yeah. There's some interesting psychological um, motivations going on here. Right. And they got a perfect guy to play Kyle Patrick Fugit because yeah. he's very scruffy in this, but average also, average looking. Right, but he also kind of looks young if you were to look past that. Mhm. Um and I think he has that look where when he looks far away he has that look of just younger than he really is, which I think is a very cool quality in right. this actor you can look in it like you can see the child in him exactly Is that what you're, exactly. if that's what you're going mm-hmm. with yeah do, do you see that as well in i him? i agree with that i think that's okay. totally yeah i get that vibe totally yeah and i love how he just looks through things he's he's very good at that mm-hmm. looking just vacant mm-hmm. look at things so uh, he is so good as kyle yeah. I, I think it's brilliant casting yep and Philip Glenister, I mean, I can't fault that <laughs> casting at all. He's no, really good in this. No, no, he, and he definitely knows how to. He Glenister like just steals every scene he's in. He does, whether he, he really mean, does. means to or not, he just does. Yeah. yeah. So, although it's not hard against Kyle, who is just quiet. Yeah, and... yeah. So you gotta have to have somebody like a little bit over the top to balance against that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although you can see that quiet contemplation in Kyle and he's still there in the scene Mm -hmm. we still need the talking of Reverend Anderson so I think it's a good balance he's a very reluctant hero if you want to call him that at least protagonist yes reluctant protagonist very I wouldn't call him a hero yet not yet but although he does save lives so far right I mean okay so the second episode yeah uh, I remember when she loved me, and it's really when she loved me. But they put the I remember, and that is right. the title of the third comic. Yep. Uh, we have oh, written by written by Jeff Vlaming, and directed by Howard Deutsch. Okay. So adapted by. Yes, adapted by really. Vlaming. Okay. Yeah. Um, they call it written, but yeah, 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 adapted. All these are adaptations. And he did a really good job. Mm-hmm. Um, a story, Mama's Boy. Mm-hmm. B story, Man in Black. C story, It's Her Party. And bonus, If a Raccoon Falls in the Woods. And really, B, C, and bonus are very, very small. The main story is Mama's Boy. Yep. There's really not much to the other story. Um, it's Her Party. Uh, his daughter. His daughter. What's her name? Holly. Holly. Yeah. Holly. Oh no. Uh, no, no. Is- oh, no, that, that's 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 Megan's daughter's name. I'm trying to remember. Oh, right. What's her daughter's name? That's what I'm trying to daughter's find name. here. Yeah, I can't remember what the uh, Amber. Amber, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so Amber is having a birthday party, mm-hmm. and he gives her a book, and I wanted to talk about the book. It's called Homer Price. He there are a couple of books with him as the protagonist and um he is uh he gets in some scrapes in these books okay uh, mostly about donuts okay i'm not familiar with them so this is all new to me i actually 
have read these books as a child and I didn't remember them uh, in detail, but I remember generally what they are. Right. Um, he tends to an unstoppable donut making machine in his uncle's diner. Okay. So it just continues to make donuts and he tries to eat them. Yeah. To stop them from. Kind, kind of like that episode, old episode of I Love Lucy. Correct. With, with the uh, chocolate making machine or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, and he tries to care for these mystery plants that are turning out to be a giant form of allergy-inducing ragweed. Okay. Um, he does some odd jobs, like raking leaves and sweeping up the diner or the barbershop. Um, and uh, he does all kinds of things. Uh, and one of them is called The Case of the Cosmic Comic, and it parodies Superman. Oh, cool. With Homer and his best friend Freddy attending the local personal appearance of Freddy's favorite superhero. Nice. Freddy is unable to understand that the super duper is an ordinary actor in a costume and expects him to be capable of super feats. Homer, however, quietly displays a more mature view of the hero. So I thought I would give some backstory on that book, which I found an interesting Little side note. Yeah, it's interesting that that's being used in this show. Mm-hmm. So. so if you want to look it up, the book is called, I mean, you can look up Homer Price because that is the name of one of the books and it'll give you more information. And hopefully it won't get your kids possessed if they read them. I would assume not. <laughs> but you never know. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, Yeah. He gives her that book, and on the paper that he wrapped it, his stepsister writes she loved the book and sends him that as a note, which makes him very happy. Right. And uh, it's kind of touching. Uh, now, what's his ex-wife's name? Megan? No, no Megan. No, no, no Allison. Okay, Allison. Yeah. Knows it's from him. It's a new show. Right? Give us a break. Yeah, we don't haven't memorized right. the characters yet. <laughs> Allison knows it's from him, right? Right. Or at least suspects. And she takes the book away from Amber, but I'm assuming that she's going to let her keep it. I don't know. I hope so. Well, let's, let's hope so. I hope so. Because it's but like... Amber falls asleep with it open on the couch, and she picks it up and folds it. And yeah, I just yeah, I just hope it doesn't end up in the trash. Me too. Let's. So, let's hope. Yeah. Um, Man in Black. That is uh, an ominous little theme. Oh yes, that's throughout. Our, he is, that's Brent Spiner. Right. He is watching things and shows up at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. uh, where. Kyle's mother is back in the home. We'll talk about that in the main story. Right. She's back in the home and he goes and has a little chat with her and kisses her on the cheek. And in her first sign of kind of being mm -hmm. cognizant, she a tear goes down her right. face. Right. Now this is after though, uh, the man in black, um, you know, he says, well, you know, despite, you know, we, Despite everything that happened, we still have him anyway. Right. So referring to Kyle. Right. So they have Kyle's soul apparently, or at least. Right. I'm guessing which, which that... is kind of weird because it's like, well, I thought he was fighting the possessions, so you think yeah. he wouldn't have his soul? Well, it might be whatever is coming out of him before Maybe. the demon comes out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. So we'll see. So is is Kyle possessed with or doomed, you know, without even realizing? Doomed yeah, yeah. To become part of whatever that thing. Yeah. Well, the merge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's merge, the great merge. Right. So he, he may be part of whatever they're planning in the merge. Yeah. So he's he's that, and the mother is. I guess she is sad about that. Yeah, but she's trapped like, in that, like, mm -hmm. paralyzed state. The coma right. comatose Com state, but her eyes are open. Mm -hmm. So she just stares. Kind of like, um, yeah. what's her name at the end of Preacher? Yeah. So it's amazing how Preacher and Outcast are still co covering 
similar backgrounds, isn't it? Yeah. You know, with the whole, a, a lot of God, you know, just, you know, the, mm -hmm. theology brought in and supernatural and yep. Right. So these shows go really well together, actually. They kind of do. <laughs> yeah, they do. We're having a very supernatural summer here on the Phantom Zone podcast. That's right. I'll have to put some supernatural stuff there in. There you go. In the opening. Constantine. <gasps> oh, oh God. Don't get my hopes up. I wish Constantine. I just go. miss, I just miss it. I do too. Okay. Okay. So that's the man in black and yep. we will hear, hear more from him. We'll be talking. I'm, I'm going to call him Sydney. Okay. Let's call him Sydney. Okay. We're going to, I think they're going to call him that in the show okay. as well. Okay. He, on IMDB, there is no name for him. It just says Brent Spiner and then nothing. But it might not be updated. No, it's not, but I'm, Yeah. they haven't released a name for yeah. him yet. Yeah. Okay, so um, if a raccoon falls in the woods, is a storyline where a guy who I'm, lives in the woods. I'm going to need that guy's arm. Oh, wait. <laughs> different raccoon. Sorry. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy reference. He's, uh, he's, <laughs> he is dragging a bag into the police station that is leaking blood. And I was for sure thinking it was a human head as, or something. As was I. I thought, okay, whose head did he happen to just find in the woods? Right. But it's an animal and he's been telling the cops that these things have been happening in the woods and there are animals that are stuck to the trees out in the woods. Right. So, and we're not learning very much about no. this. So, the, so the chief and Mark end up going out to the woods. Yeah. And they find like the crucified raccoons nailed to a tree. Right. And some dude's trailer out in the middle of nowhere. Right. With scratches all over the inside. And first, Chief Jaws is like, well, it's just animals. It's got to be animals. But then and Mark's like, well, not maybe. So much. Maybe. Because it yeah, kind of like, well, is it human? He his, yeah. He puts his fingers in the blood marks and they line up to real finger, fingers. So. Yep. So it's just like, okay, before this gets all Blair Witch, let's just tip out of the woods. Right. <laughs> So we don't learn much about that except for the fact that they go and investigate yep. so that we get to see what might be happening in the woods. Yep. So there's some sort of ritual probably happening out there. Probably satanic. Probably. Probably. Right. And the fact that we see the animals mm -hmm. on the trees, but we don't see any human thing, that's worrisome. Yes, it is. Because we all know that, especially with serial killers, animals are just a first step. Correct. Before killing humans. Right. It's like, you know, like training bras for serial killers. <laughs> right. Gross. Sorry. Yeah. But actually, the leaky bag was gross. Yes, it was. Oh, it was so gross. I should have not used that for my rating. Well, you can't. Um, I understand that. <laughs> well, we'll get into that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Mama's boy, and this was the main plot line: uh, was Kyle seeing visions of his past when times were good with his mother? A lot of backstory here, and we also flash to the present, mm -hmm. where he is concerned about his mother in the nursing home because she's comatose, as we've mentioned, and he talks to her. While he's while she's there comatose, and he is very unhappy about the conditions. Yeah, there's her bedding needs to be changed, and the room is falling down. And there's something, yeah, like there's water dripping from the ceiling, or is it water? Right, he's not happy about that so, at all. So, is it something else that was on the ceiling? Well, he doesn't like things on the ceiling, definitely, understandably. Right, and he is he doesn't like this at all, and the nurse is not helpful. But then he does the absolutely wrong. But then he does the absolutely wrong thing. Right. He decides he's going to abscond with his mother and take her to his house, which is not great. It's not a widely regarded as a good move. No, and he is not her her contact. Mm -hmm. uh, Reverend Anderson is right. So he gets notified. He gets notified, and he goes out to Kyle's house, and. Uh, he's not pleased either Nope. about what's going on. But he says, Kyle says that he wants to cure his mother and there is a desperate attempt 
to cure her. And he so just... he pulls the bed into the light That's and he he tries to open the cut on his hand on the wall, which he does. It's dripping and he puts the blood in her mouth and she coughs it up. Just, you know, a, a reflex Does... cough. And, but she doesn't wake up. See I, thought, see, I thought just her head turned and it just poured out. She coughed a little bit. Oh, did she? Okay. Yeah, I little, didn't catch that. It, it was more of a reflex kind of. <laughs> okay. okay, got it. Sort of thing. Um. So it doesn't work. And it's because she's not possessed. So there's no curing that. She's, she's just, just checked out. Almost, right. Yeah. Traumatized. Yeah, I'm guessing that's it. Yeah. Uh, and maybe whatever was possessing her had taken too much from her. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. So uh, that's in the present. And then, you know, she ends up having to go back to the home, obviously, because he can't take care of her. And it was the wrong thing to do. And it was just a whole lot of mess. But apparently so she, she can she can cry. Well, when the man in black's there, at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ends up saying, I'm sorry to her before he leaves. Kyle, mm -hmm. man in black. And later the man in black goes and has that chat with her. Uh, but he has flashes to the past where times were good. And this, he has a chat with her in the home about, I remember when you were, you know, gardening. I remember when you used to tell me stories in the yard. This and, is where they get the title from. The right. I episode. remember when she loved me. Yep. Yeah. And then there's flashbacks to times that weren't so good. When he finds a tooth yeah. underneath the dresser the, or something. Dresser. Or, uh, I'm not sure what it is, a, a side bar or something yeah, yeah um he is wrapping the gift that he gives to his daughter and he drops the tape underneath there and he finds a tooth and it's a tooth that gets knocked out of his mother's mouth when he is hitting her and so it takes him back to that day and he gets these flashes of when he was locked in the closet and when he had to lock her in the closet and on this very bad day, it's the day that he exercises her. Mm -hmm. um, she gets put in the closet, and I guess it's later, like he leaves her in there for a while. Right. And she is pleading at some point after being in there a while, I'm afraid of the dark. Yeah, Come so, so it's, it's the total uh, demon sucker move. Right. Because And he does let her out. Bad move. He opens the door, dummy, right, and dummy. she lunges. Right. At, and it leads to this horrible fight where he has to fight back. He He's had it at this point. He needs to fight back. Mm -hmm. So he does. There's light there. Yep. We notice that she's in the light. Right. She's so over the top mad. And he hits her. And then the black comes out of her. Probably that's when the blood goes... Right, yeah. from the hitting. Yes. Right? From his knuckles, yeah. Right. And we see the tooth get knocked out right, of her right. mouth. So, no, it's a very hard hit. Yes. Um, and the, the blackness comes out of her mouth and goes to the ceiling. And as she's laying there with her head facing him, she sees the blackness make a noose yeah, it, from the it, ceiling it, it, and yeah. try and strangle him. Yeah, it goes into the air and hovers there. Right, and then wraps itself around young Kyle, and mm -hmm. tries to strangle him. Yeah, not nice. And as you know, as Kyle's mother is just laying there watching this helplessly. Right. Now, one of the things I wonder when I watch this, because it's nuance, of course, is is it the the exorcism that makes her comatose? Is it the tra trauma of watching her son almost get killed by this that makes her comatose? It, I mean, is it, I have what to, is it? I have to think it's the trauma. Yeah. I have to because she just suddenly checks out. Yeah. And Kyle's just like, wait, what happened? Why, why is my mom like this? Why are you carting her away? Because the ambulance shows up. Right. And... And social services. And social there services well, to take, take him away. Him away. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and he he kind of lunges toward his mom to say, you know, don't take her away. And I guess he has hope that she'll be different now. 
because whatever happened mm-hmm. happened and of course she'll be different but he doesn't know that she will be unable to take care of him right uh, but this of course is going to lead to him being taken in by this family and and have this stepsister and all this other stuff we don't get to see that but uh, he get she gets taken away and we see him on the porch and he's he's beaten. So when the social services woman comes, all they right. see is a woman who's been beating her kid and so he ends up getting taken yeah. from the house. Yep. Um, and that makes me wonder how does he own the house? It's a good question. <laughs> I think there's a, I'm not sure if we'll find out. Yeah. But, but it's just but, one of those little niggly but, things. But somehow, yeah, he ends up with the house, and right. he has apparently some income to keep the lights on. Right. So how, where's his income I'm from? I'm thinking it's just a hand wave. Maybe there's a trust? Maybe. I don't set up for him? I don't know. Maybe, hopefully we'll find out. But yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's a little n- nagging question. I know. It's just something I notice. And, and now I've put it in your mind. And You're no, welcome. No, I can't get it out. Yeah. Why did you do that to me? You're welcome. Karen well, Shakespeare. He was like 12 or something. Yeah. And now he owns the house still. So. Yep. Sorry. Thanks a lot. It, it would get sold, right? You would think. Put up for oh. a, yeah, a, you know, a state sale or something. but Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah, I don't know. So, so did I get everything? I don't know. Unless, you know, like, well, he was away. Some, yeah. Uh, oh, you're somewhere. still fixated on the I house. am. I am now because now you put it in my head. So, yes. <laughs> so I'm going to figure this out. Okay. okay. So he was away. He just recently came back to town, right? Right. So maybe he had money wherever he was uh-huh. doing whatever he was doing. Bought the house, and the tooth was still there underneath. The yeah, maybe, like maybe it was just boarded up. Nobody would buy it. Maybe because something bad happened there, so nobody bought it. Maybe. So then maybe it was just it. sitting there empty. Or like, yeah, who knows? Okay. Or somebody was like holding it for him. Okay. Maybe, maybe Reverend Anderson. Maybe it was placed in his name. Maybe Reverend Anderson. Maybe. So we'll see. Okay. So find out, hopefully. All right. I don't think we'll find out. I don't think we'll find out either because I think it's just something they have right. I think it's a hand wave. It is. It is. But it's an interesting I'd put it in your head. It is a great question. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? (laughs) No. Sorry for putting that in your head, though. (sighs) It's just one of those things that I notice. Why do you do this to me? I see him standing on the porch and them taking his mom away, and I know they're the only two people that live there. And I'm like, well, he owns the house. Where's his dad? We don't know about his dad. Oh, it's one of those. It's probably the dad was never in the picture thing. Oh, was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. And when he died, all he left me was alone. Yep. Yeah, I love that song. Yep. Okay. So I think that's everything. All right. What's your rating? We didn't leave anything out. What's your rating? Um, I gave this eight leaky bags, which is why you can't use it. <sighs> All, right. Uh-huh. All right. I gave this one um, eight teeth found under a dresser or whatever that was. Right. It was a, some sort of hutch. Yeah. That's what dresser, it was. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So next week. So that's, wait a minute. That's it. That's it. We don't have like and we don't, wait. We don't have like five more shows to review this week. Nope. Good thing because we're already at an hour and a half. I know, so. and we don't have feedback because Justina doesn't watch Blade shows. Oh well, I'm sorry, Justina. I know. I hope you're still but listening. She said she'd listen. I hope you're still listening to the Phantom Zone podcast. Yes. Even though you don't have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, she tried to listen. She tried to watch Preacher, Didn't, the second episode of Preacher, but did, the chainsaw started and she couldn't get through that whole scene. That's okay. It's not for everybody. She's gonna try and watch it again. Okay. So I urge her to try and watch again, but I have a feeling. Yeah. This you might you might have to take the summer off. 
Maybe. Maybe. I hope not, though. Uh, Although, yes. if we decide to incorporate Winona Earp in... That's true. That's true. She does watch that. Or, so. or Powers, if you decide you want to watch that. Maybe. Yeah, I understand. I get it. I haven't gotten to it yet. I get it. I get it. We'll find out. So what do we want to do next week? Because so if we're gonna if we're gonna kinda give a little cushion for outcast so we don't have to scramble. Just, just preacher, I guess. Just preacher. Do you want to start on Winona Earp? We could. We could watch the first episode of that if you don't want to watch Powers. So it's up to you. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Okay, I'll track down Winona Earp and we'll tell you, that's what we'll do. We'll do Preacher episode three and we'll do Winona Earp episode one. And hopefully that okay. hopefully that'll give Justina something to watch. Okay. And a little Excellent. a little more Justina friendly. That's right. Show. So right. so And Justina, please don't don't spoil other episodes of Winona Earp. <laughs> oh. Only talk about one episode. I've yes. I've watched more than one. I've but. I have not watched any yet. Right. So I'm going to this totally cold because I never read read the comic either. Right. So I haven't either, but the show's very good. Okay. So we'll we'll check it out. We'll check it okay. out. Um, and she's very spunky. I like her. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm just, I, I hear good things about the show, so you'll like. I'm it. sure. Hopefully, I'll find it fun mm-hmm. to talk about so so why don't we do that we'll talk about preacher episode three and winona or the first episode right is that cool and then the next week it'll be preacher winona Earp, and outcast that's that's fine okay so you've given up on powers already yeah let's just <laughs> okay not. okay that's cool. well for one thing it's on playstation network which is yeah a very obscure way to it is it is okay all right so that's we'll do that then Okay. If that's okay is with it, you. No, that's cool with me. I get it. All right. All right? As long as our... Uh, if you guys really want us to cover powers, let us know. Yeah. But, uh, and then I will. I'll I'll take the bullet. Okay. And I'll watch it. But, you know, we did get requests to cover Winona Earp. Right. So we are... Um, so I, your yeah. voice is listened to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I might actually have that email, hopefully. If I still have it here. Oh, maybe, oh, it's on my iPad. Darn it. I don't have my phone set up for that. Only my iPad. It's all right. Okay. But, but yes, yeah, somebody wrote in. It was, a, a listener was kind enough to uh, write in and say, please talk about Winona Earp. Right. Because I really dig the show and I love it. And it's a comic book show. So you guys should talk about it, right? Right. And Justina also said, that she wanted us to talk about it. So we got more than one request. Okay, so we'll, so we'll to talk about so, Winona Earp. Uh, don't let it be said that we don't listen to our listeners. Right. And Ruthie also wanted us okay, to Okay, so there you go. By popular it. demand. How's that? Yeah. Winona We're Earp. gonna do Winona Earp next week. Start right. it. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. So preacher and Winona Earp and then the next week preacher Winona Earp and we'll continue on Outcast because it comes on yeah, so, on so Friday night. So we'll skip <laughs> Outcast for a week to catch to get it more so that we can get so, a buffer. Yeah, we can get a little buffer in there. Right. Cuz it airs so quickly <laughs> before it, the podcast. It does. It does. So we that way we don't have to scramble in case something happens. All right. Update the the I will update our schedule. Database. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> she looks like by that. Yeah. A lot of inside baseball in this episode. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we go by a database that has all of our Karen, what we yeah. talk about, and I use that as a bible for what we're going to talk about. Just like I use Karen's Google Doc for reference, she uses the schedule yeah. that I update for reference. Right. So that we can remember which shows we're supposed to cover. And I go with that big time. Unless you're like Charles and forget that we were going to do two episodes of Outcast this week. Don't. That's right. Exactly. But we got through it. We got through it. We did. All right, so um, where can That's they, it. if they want to get a hold of us and say, hey, you need to talk about these shows, including Powers, if you really want us to cover Powers. But That's right. Uh, where can they reach us, Karen? They can reach us at, at Fandom Zonecast on Twitter. Like that segue there? That's right. That was very good. Thank you. And on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Fandom Zone Podcast. Mm-hmm. And then our email is fandomzonecast at gmail.com. Excellent. And you can reach me at Aloveria on the Twitter machine. Right. And there's a link in my bio to my blog, which has been going crazy lately with people going there 
and looking at it. As well they should. Yeah, I did a post about books that I got a lot of feedback on, which I was very happy about. Excellent. So, yeah, go there. But the pinned post is uh, where you can find me. So it has all my links and, and that sort of thing. Yep. So there's that. And where can they find you? They can find me at Charles Skaggs on the Twitter machine. Yay. At Charles Skaggs on the Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I posted a lot of pictures from my vacation on the Instagram. Yay. So hopefully you dig those. Um, and also on Facebook, because I'm also on Facebook, of course. Google mm-hmm. Plus for all you crazy kids on the Google Plus. <laughs> And my blog of geeky things, Damn Good Coffee and Hots, where I talk about Preacher and Outcast and all kinds of other comic book stuff, including uh, upcoming casting for Supergirl and uh, yeah, that. all kinds of stuff. Your blog is so much better than mine, though. No, I just... I, it is. It's okay. It's not better. It's just it. It's what it is. No, it is. My blog is all... I don't know. <laughs> It's bipolar, my <laughs> blog. Your blog is very concentrated. No, I try. I try. But, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Your your blog is awesome, too. Yeah, but it's weird. That's okay. Weird's good. I like weird. Okay. So weird's cool. Don't Never underestimate weird. Let's see if you get this reference. I like dark. Dark is good. Mm, I, don't, I might know. Square it. pegs? Did you watch Square Pegs? I did, but I don't remember it. It's the guy who played Captain Kirk's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny and something. had the glasses. Johnny Slash went, or something, wasn't it? I like Dark. Dark is good. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to remember He's, the character's name. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that was... He said that a lot. That was, yeah, that was the guy who played Kirk's son in uh, Search for Spock. Yep. And R.I.P. Yes. For, yep. Yep. And he was also on an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation in the first season. Mm-hmm. He was. In the episode Symbiosis. Mm-hmm. That's right. He played one half of yeah. a team yeah. of yeah. things that lived off each other. All right. That's the title. Okay. So so that's everything that's for us. And um, if you're a fan of our lovely banter that we do here in the Phantom Zone podcast, <laughs> uh, I'd like to mention that we, as Karen mentioned, uh, we just talked on Next Stop Everywhere – the Doctor Who podcast this past week. And uh, it would be episode 60 as we... The Robots of Death. The Robots of Death, which will That's hopefully right. be posted soon. It was very fun. But uh, yeah, Enjoy we're waiting for Rob time. to get around to posting that. But uh, hopefully... Super fun. I think he's on vacation, so I have to let it slide. But All right. But uh, yeah, hopefully he'll get that posted soon. So you can hear Karen on the next stop everywhere at the Doctor Who podcast. Very cool. So check that out. I had a lot of fun. We with always that. have fun with Karen, especially on Doctor Who, because I know she loves the Fourth Doctor. Yeah. So. Well, I love lots of doctors, but he, he's, like he's I said, your, he's your, my doctor. He's your doctor, yeah. and I, I get yeah. that. So it's fun to have you on to talk about the Fourth Doctor. And Leela was in this one. Yes, yeah, so I wanted awesome. to talk about Leela, so we had fun with that too. Yeah. yeah. All right. And the Robots of Death. Yep. So that about does it. Robots of Death. We got through this episode without Blaine, you know. We, we did, I know. We didn't veer off too much, except for the Warcraft thing. Right, but right. That was all me. Okay. All right, so... Uh, That's it? I guess we'll... Uh... So, we're just done with phrasing, right? That's <laughs> not a thing anymore? <laughs> I had to get Archer in there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. So, uh, I guess we will talk to you guys next week. And we've given you a heads up on what to watch. So watch all that. And uh, that's it. Yeah? Yeah. You want to say goodbye? I'll say goodbye. Bye, everyone. And we'll see you next week Bye. on the Phantom Zone podcast. Yep. Where's our outro? There it is. Bring 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 Wow, wow, wow.